Hello! Very happy to see you all have made it here today because we have gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. You all have made it and you're here and Jesus Christ is alive. If you're there on our live stream there on Facebook, you've noticed we are an hour late. And well, you know, everybody experiences technical difficulties here and there every now and then, but the good news is we made it, and you have made it here as well. For those of you on YouTube, we are very happy to have you here as well. We live stream our sermons on Facebook, and then every weekday during the week, 9.30 Mountain Time, Colorado Time, in the morning, we live stream, you know, our daily bread, which is Bible study every week, every day of the week, excuse me. And if you've been following along all week long through our live streams, everything we're going to talk about this morning kind of is going to make sense as we are kind of wrapping it all together in a nice, beautiful little package and giving that as a gift to you to be able to store within your heart, right? And so I want to begin with the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everybody who has gathered here with us. We thank you for the wisdom we have and our ability to understand it. We thank you for the word that comes from you that encourages us and builds us up. We thank you, Father, for loving us, caring for us, redeeming us, and restoring us. We thank you. Open our heart and our mind to receive your message today. Amen. So, all week long I've been talking a little bit about recovery and from childhood abuse, right, and recovering from some sort of an addiction because we believe the addiction came from one of the effects. When we're abused as children, when we're inside a, a, an abusive relationship, one of the effects are we're wounded, we're hurt, and, and then we begin to seek out help from some sort of a source to bind up those wounds. And some people are, are deceived in believing that drugs and alcohol and some other form of addiction, whatever it may be, is the answer or the solution to that problem. Again, we speak of, you know, many heroin addicts and people of that nature in, in that place will tell you the first time they did heroin, they felt like they just had this great big warm fuzzy hug wrapped all around them and they felt so good and wonderful. All their problems and their pains just melted away. But then later, as time went on, they come to find out that, that it no longer made them feel loved, warm, or hugged. Instead, the only thing it made them feel was normal because when they weren't on it, they were sick. And they just didn't want to be sick. And so the reality was it was slowly and softly killing them. And there's many people who could look from the outside and, and see it. But it, it's never, it's never going to change. You're never going to find the healing until you admit, one, you need healed. Two, it's making you sick. You know, and I get and I recognize and I understand that, you know, some people could not find support in a church or a church setting inside of the gathering of believers. And many people will say, I went to church and when I was there, I had the church hurt me, so I'm not going back. And again, I want to remind you that the church is Jesus Christ. The church didn't hurt you. What, what hurts is the truth. The truth hurts. 
And, and in that, we, we come to church and everybody, right? We're, we're seeking God. We're trying to find God. And I come to church and I didn't find God. I found a bunch of sinners, right? Never recognizing that God was in the church because you came. God is the one who welcomes you in. God is the one who draws you in. See, we're always looking to find God, never recognizing God was there because you came. So it, it comes down to an individual or some person inside a church may have hurt you, and, and it may have been yourself because we lack faith. We, we lacked the faith to believe in the truth. And when that truth presented itself to us, our lack of faith became what we couldn't trust in, or we couldn't trust in God because of that lack of faith. We couldn't believe God welcomed us into his gathering of believers. And, and so we were hurt. And we went away sad. And then we never recognized and realized we, we create for ourselves a support system from dysfunctional people. And in that, you're never going to find healing. You're never going to find the redemption you're looking for. You're never going to find the salvation God truly wants to give you. So these are the things we've been talking about all week long, just refreshing your mind and, and your memory and bringing up to speed those who weren't a part of the daily bread messages that were going on all week. But here, I, I want to open up a scripture right here from Hebrews chapter 11, and, and this is kind of what we've been talking about all week long, as we've been talking about one of the effects of childhood abuse is broken faith. I, one, I can't believe God is faithful, and two, my faith has been broken. When, when the people around you who were entrusted with your well-being violate you, hurt you, or break you down, you, you, you certainly can't trust in, in an unseen God. When, when the people you have seen have broke you. So faith and trust are basically the same thing. So I want to read to you this thing, and we're trying, right, to restore what was broken, to grab hold of that which was stolen from us. And this is what it says, chapter 11, verse 6, says this. And without faith, it is impossible to please him who whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, that he is, and that he rewards those who seek him. And, and so that's one of the things, and we'll get back into the book of Hebrews here in, in a minute, but that's one of the things that's preventing people from finding that healing that restoration or, or that redemption. That's one of the things that people are confronted with when, when they come into the house of God, seeking for God, and, and, and then believing they never found God. Because one, God is so near to you, he's on your very tongue. He's in you. And he's with you. But if you don't believe it, it's certainly hard to trust in it. Right? So this is what I want to remind us of. If we're going to believe God is, what is it we believe he is? And this is what we got. God, in the very name of God, right? Yahweh, when he presented himself to Moses, was, I am. 
And, and, and I am is he is. He is Jesus. Elohim, God, Judge, Creator, Yahweh, Lord, I am, El, Elion, the Most High God, Adonai, Lord, Master, El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty, El Olam, the Everlasting God, the God of Eternity, the God of the universe, the God of ancient days. He is Yahweh Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Shiloh, the peacemaker. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord that heals. Yahweh Nisa, the Lord my banner. The Lord my miracle. He is Kanana, jealous. Yahweh, M M Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies you, the Lord who makes you holy. He is a star, a scepter out of Israel, the accursed of God. The captain of the host of the Lord, Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace, Yahweh Sh 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 Sabiath, excuse me, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of powers, the rock of my salvation. He is the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds. He is the day man the interpreter, my rock, my redeemer. Crowned with a crown of pure gold, the most blessed forever. He is the forsaken, a worm and no man. He is Yahweh Raha, my restorer, the king of glory. He who sitteth as king forever. He is a stranger, an alien, my strong rock, my rock, my fortress. Fairer than the children of men, the rock that is higher than I. He is the rock of my strength, the rock of habitation. He is as rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. He is the rock of my heart, the shield, the rock of my refuge, the king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. He is a brother born for adversary, the friend that loves at all times a stone of grace. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother as an ointment. Poured forth my well-beloved, a bundle of myrrh, a cluster of henna blooms, the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. He is the chiefest among 10,000. His consonant is as Lebanon. Yea, he is altogether lovely. He is my beloved and my friend. He is holy, holy, holy. A sanctuary, the great light. A son given. He is the Almighty God, the Father of Eternity, a child born, the Prince of Peace. He is an ensign of the people, the nail fastened in a sure place. He is a strength to all the poor, the strength 
to the needy in distress, a shadow from the heat, the refuge from the storm. He is the rock of ages. He is a crown of glory and beauty. He is a stone. He is a tried stone. He is a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, as a hiding place from the wind. He is the king in his beauty, my leader, the everlasting God. Mine elect in whom my soul delights. A, de a light of the Gentiles, a covenant of the peoples, the polished shaft. He is glorious. He is the Holy One of Israel, a man of sorrows, despised, rejected, stricken, smitten, wounded, bruised, oppressed. He is my portion my maker, my husband, the God of the whole earth. He is the witness to his people. He is a leader, a commander, the redeemer. He is mighty. He is my physician. Yahweh Tiskanu, the Lord, our righteous. He is David, their king, my resting place, my feeder. He is the plant of the renowned. He is Yahweh Shamanah. The Lord is there. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Messiah, the Prince, the strength of the children of Israel. He is the hope of thy people the ruler, king over all the earth. He is a refiner's fire, a fuller's soul, my refiner, my purifier. He is the son of righteousness. He is Jesus, Yeshua, salvation. Emmanuel, God is with us. He is born as the king of the Jews. He is a governor. He is the Nazarene. He is the bridegroom, meek and lowly. He is the one of whom the Father says, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, the Son of the living God. He is Jesus the Christ, the rock the builder, the prophet of Nazareth. He is betrayed, mocked, crucified. He is the Holy One of God. He is my brother, the carpenter. His life is a ransom. He is the son of the blessed, the son of the highest God. He is my savior the horn of my salvation, the day spring from on high. He is a savior, which is Christ, the Lord, the salvation of God. He is the glory of thy people Israel. He is Lord of the Sabbath. He is my helper, the Christ of God, my servant, the chosen of God. He is risen a prophet, mighty in deed and word, the word. He is the word that was God, or was with God. He is the word that was God. He is the light of men. He is the true light, the word that was made flesh. He is the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, the Lamb of God, 
my teacher. He is the gift of God. He is the Messiah. He is the bread of God, the bread of life, my meat, my drink, the light of the world. He is the poor of the sheep. He is the good shepherd that laid down his life. He is the scent of the Father. He is the resurrection the king of the daughter of Zion. He is the corn of wheat. He is the light, my Lord, my master, my example. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the vine. He is scourged, crowned with the crown of thorns crucified as the king of the Jews. He is exalted. He is glorified. He is the Holy One and the just. He is the Prince of Life, the Anointed, the Prince and a Savior. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, the Judge of Jesus of Nazareth. He is the mercy seat, Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the firstborn among many brethren. Over all, God blessed forever. He is Lord, both of the living and of the dead. He is the minister of the circumcision. He is my wisdom, my righteousness, my salvation, my sanctification. He is my redemption. He is the foundation, my passion. He is that spiritual rock, the head of every man, the first fruits of them that slept. He is the last Adam. He is the quickening. He is the Spirit, the image of God. He is the unspeakable gift. He is my peace, the offering, the sacrifice, the head over all things to the church. He is he who fills all in all. He is a servant who humbled himself unto death, even death on a cross. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of every creation. He is the creator of all things, the firstborn from the dead, the head of the body. He is the church. He is my all in all, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is Lord of peace, Lord of hope, God manifest in the flesh. He is the justified. He is the mediator, the righteous judge, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the temple, the merciful, the faithful. He is holy, harmless, undefiled. He is the separate. He is the perfect. He is my helper. The lamb without blemish, the hidden manna, the faithful and the true witness. He is the Amen, the beginning of creation of God. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lamb that was slain. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Lord God Almighty. 
He is first and last, the greatest and the smallest. He is the lamb in the midst of the throne. He is the king of saints. He is king of nations. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the God of gods. He is the word of God. He is the temple. God, above all, is love. Jesus is the love of God. And so, hearing that and recognizing that and understanding that, and where is our faith? What are we put our faith in? And then we ask ourselves and we wonder why it is I, I, I feel is that, uh, that I'm being controlled by some sort of a foreign spirit or a foreign substance and I cannot release myself from the bondage of that foreign spirit. Whether it's a, a, a drug abuse or alcohol abuse or, or whatever it is, maybe it's self-abuse not believing we're worthy, not believing we're loved. See, see, this is the, the problem. We don't believe with absolute truth. Absolute without a doubt in your body that God is for you. That he can start a work in you and bring it to completion. He is the author of our faith. And he is the finisher of the race. See, you can be just like Jesus. Even Jesus himself says you can. Right there in the Gospel of John chapter 15. If you love me, I will send to you the helper. I'll send you the advocate. I'll send to you the Holy Spirit. And it will empower you to do all the things I do. <clears throat> and even greater things than these. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. And the greatest commandment of, of all that Jesus gave to each one of us was trust in me. Believe in me. For those who trust and believe in the Lord our God are blessed. And nothing is impossible for you. But for those who don't believe, absolutely nothing is possible. Jesus says, if you love me, not only will you obey my commandments, God our Father and himself, together will come and be with you and in you. And they will even eat dinner with you. And that's the thing when we come to church and looking and seeking for God, never recognizing God was there. He was there. And he was there because you came. We are all members of one body, the body of Jesus Christ, who is our provider, is our healer, is our redeemer. God is our all in all. And so many people are out there struggling in the world in a place of frustration and doubt and depression and self loathing, they, they, they feel worthless, they, they feel like they don't have the, the power to overcome any problems or struggles within their lives. Even an addiction that seems to have hold tight of your very being. But all of it comes because we don't believe God. We don't believe in his healing power. 
in his love and in his grace. We, we come to church looking for somebody to validate us. And all the while, you were welcomed into the building, you were welcomed into the gathering because God has deemed you worthy, has deemed you righteous. You are the temple where God's Holy Spirit lives and moves. And if you don't believe it, if you don't have faith in it, you might come to church and say, this, this is the last place on earth I'm going to find support. And I'm going to find out. All I can find here is judgment. But sometimes the judgment is coming from within and has nothing to do with those who are out there. And maybe what we see inside of the church of God is everything we wished we could be, but don't believe we can be. And so we go back to our support group of dysfunctional people, the drug dealer, the liquor store, the porno shop, whatever it may be that has gripped us to this addiction And I recognize it, and I understand that it's not easy to believe in a God you can't see. But I promise you, and I'm telling you, that you can be healed. You can be redeemed. You can find recovery. You can. And I think it starts right here. As we reopen the book of Hebrews, chapters 10. And this is what it says. Verse 15. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us after saying, or witness to us for after saying. This is the covenant I will make with them. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. And we studied all week long Psalm 119. As the psalmist is there speaking and crying out, God, do you remember me? Do, do you know me? Do you hear me? Are, are you going to answer me? I, I want to put my faith in all your promises and your words. And, and that's what a covenant is. It is a promise. A promise to people. And I, I want to seek you out with all my heart and all my mind. Because I know your word is a light unto my path. And yet Jesus Christ is the word of God. He is the light shining a way for us to find our way home. The living example given to us to follow. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. No more. And sometimes that, that's the problem. We don't believe God has forgiven us. He's not waiting to forgive you. you. You are forgiven. And nobody's here counting your sins. God's not counting your sins. It's, it's not about living in sin. It's about living in unbelief. I don't believe I'm worthy to not be an alcoholic or, or a drug addict or, or whatever it is. I don't believe I'm worthy to be free of pain and emotional pain and heartache. I don't believe I'm worthy to just be loved. So it comes down to unbelief. It's not about looking and saying, hey, all drug addicts and that are living in sin. No, it's killing you. 
It's destroying you. And all we're saying is there's a better life for you. All you've got to do is believe in it. One of the things that holds us in a place of anger, hatred, this desire to, to drug ourselves so we don't have to confront the anger or the hatred is unforgiveness. God saying, I'm going to put my laws, my spirit in you. And this is what I, I, I say, I, I'm going to remember your sins no more or your lawless deeds. And so sometimes maybe the best thing we could do to begin to heal ourselves is to forgive those who hurt us and who violated us. Maybe that's why Jesus says, forgive me, Father, for my trespasses, my debts, my sins. Because today I have forgiven those who have trespassed against me, who have sinned against me who violated me. They don't even know you're angry. And they don't have to prove of your forgiveness. All you got to do is let it go. Let it go. I'll remember your sin no more. Because I don't want to allow that to hold me captive any longer. Maybe for a lot of people. You have to forgive yourself. Some people believe it. it was my own doing that put me in a relationship with an abusive spouse. It was my own doing that put me in that spot when that person tricked me and pulled me into a place where they were able to violate me as a child. And maybe you have to forgive yourself for allowing yourself to be harmed, to be hurt. It's not about sin. And it's not about sin for God. And as Jesus said, you'll never see the kingdom of God unless you are reborn. You must be reborn. You must let go of yesterday. It's dead. It's gone. You can never go back to that moment and fix it or change it. But what you can do is let it die and go to rest and grab hold of today. You know, Jesus never says, worry about tomorrow or be faithful with the things of tomorrow. I've said it a few times and I'm saying it again. This is going to be the year everybody's going to say, boy, I was really glad just to have survived it. To have survived it. Nobody's going to look back on 2023 and say, boy, that was a great year, wasn't it? And you're going to look back and say, man, I'm just glad I survived it. Because it's a year of testing. And great trials and God's coming into our lives and testing all of us in every facet of our lives. What will you be faithful with? Anything. Will you be faithful with even the smallest of things? What will you be faithful with? And Jesus says, be faithful with today. With today. This is why many people who are in the recovery process say, I, I just do it one day at a time. That's all I have the faith for. That's all I have the strength to endure. And yet God says, I'm okay with that. I'm pleased with that. Because right now, today, I am with you. What more do you need? What more would we desire? And this is the day of the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. What has robbed us of our rejoicing and our, and our joy? 
probably the influence of a foreign spirit that's robbing us of our life. And, and, I, and I recognize and I understand that you have created for yourself an entire support system around dysfunctional people, people who can't heal you, but people who can't help you because they, they themselves are, are stuck in that same miry mud that you are. And it's just as the Bible says, sinners love sinners. Tax collectors love tax collectors. Government folks love government folks. But love those who won't love you back. That's the true test of faith. Can you do it? And as people who are subject themselves to the pains and the sufferings of an addiction, because it's very oppressive. We're all complaining about the uh, uh, tyrannical government, but there's nothing more tyrannical than a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction or a sex addiction or whatever the addiction is. An addiction is an addiction, no matter what it is. It masters you. It controls you. When it calls your name, you come running to it. You'll give anything and everything for it. All your money, your time, your resources, your joy, your happiness, and, and everybody around you is crying, weeping, because you're not there. They want you. They want you whole. They want you healthy. And they want you because they love you. Listen to this. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any suffering for sin. Or no, excuse me, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the household of God, let us draw near with a true heart in fullness, full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is a habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful exp exp expectation, that word's hard to say, of judgment and a fury a fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much more worse the punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged his spirit of grace, right? 
And, you know, are we talking Jesus Christ out in the foreign universe? Trampling him underfoot? No, did you not know or recognize you are the sons of God? And maybe it's yourself you're trampling underfoot. And you come to church and say, well, I, I can't find peace in the midst of those holy and religious people. It's because you come to church and you're confronted with the truth. Your faith has not been made mature. You don't believe you're worthy to be here because God called you here. See, all of creation is crying, moaning, for the sons of God to be revealed. And most people will continue breaking themselves down and beating themselves apart because they don't believe they are the sons of God. Remember when we were going through the list of who is God? He is mocked, he's rejected, he is crucified, he is a man of sorrows. He's everything you said you were. He is the smallest and the greatest, the first and the last. You know, everything in there says he is in you and he is with you. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But but recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves have a better position and an abiding one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and not delay. But my righteousness, my righteous one, shall live by faith. The righteous live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. You know, and I think that's something I really wish and hope that everyone has been able to recognize and understand that there is a Savior in this world. He, he lives in you. Salvation does exist. And it's alive in you. And that's why the scriptures say, Awake, awake, O sleeper. We put on the body of Christ. You can be healed. Because Jesus Christ is a healer. You can be redeemed. Because Jesus Christ is a redeemer. You can be restored because Jesus Christ restores. 
you can do all things. And everyone who believes God is, he is who he says he is, can do anything. Nothing is impossible for you. And if you had just a mustard seed of faith, only a mustard seed, you could say to that mountain, uproot yourself and plant yourself into the sea and it will obey you. And so it comes down to trust in God. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And that's what Jesus says all the time and all the while. Believe in me. Trust in me. Because God so loved you. He gave you me. So that everyone who believes in me could have eternal life and not perish. So we see right there that God is a life-giving spirit. Life-giving. Allow that pain and suffering from your past disappear. Because when it's gone and you have forgiven it, it is no more. No more. Let it go and let it die so that you may live and you may prosper and you may regain that strength to believe you're worthy of love. Love. And we don't need to worry about tomorrow, next month, or next year. We don't have to worry about it. Because God is there. He's in it. And he'll be there right there for you. Just enjoy God for what he is and who he is right now. So that's the reality. It's never not going to be right now. No matter where I am in life, it's now. This is the moment I have. And in this moment, I have the power of existence. I have the power of everything good. It's available to you. It's yours. God has declared the air is yours. I guess the question is, can you hear the heartbeat of heaven? Can you hear it? Do you want it? Let us end with a prayer. Father, so thankful for everybody who joined us today. I'm thankful that those who are crippled, lame, blind, and deaf are being drawn in to your family in order to be healed. We thank you, Father, for those who are brokenhearted and struggling to overcome childhood abuse, for bringing them in, because we know you want to heal them. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for the life we have. We thank you for this wonderful and beautiful day. We thank you for this place of worship because we know you are here. We thank you, Father. We thank you for being our rock, our shield. We thank you for everything you're doing in our lives and the lives of those who don't believe because we know all good things are coming and flowing from you and through you. And so we thank you 
for allowing us to be used by you in order to glorify yourself through us, your children. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Those of you on the Facebook live stream, we apologize. You cannot listen to the music because godly Christian music is against the rules. You know, you, you, you just don't get to enjoy it. For those of you on YouTube, you do get to enjoy some of the music. But I'd just like to remind you, every weekday, 9.30, Colorado time, mountain time, in the morning, we have our daily bread. Come and find those live streams. One, you can interact with me. You can ask questions. You, you can just listen. And those are all recorded. And if you want to find those later at a better time that more best fits your schedule, it's there for you. But it is our daily bread. And our hope is to fill your souls with encouragement. Love, hope, and God. That manna that came down from heaven. You can find that on our Father's House of Prayer. There on YouTube. Just search our Father's House of Prayer. Look for my smiling face. And there you go. It's right there available to you. If you'd like to help or support this ministry in any way, Send to us your prayers, your encouraging words, the like button, subscribe, share the message. And you can also send a financial donation to David Cecina here at our Father's House of Prayer at 250 East Street, 4th Street in Ray, Colorado. And we'd appreciate that. We thank you all for joining us. Until next time, we'll see you later. May God be with you. For those of you on YouTube, sit back and enjoy these next couple songs. As again, this is, you know, the word of God flowing to us and through us through this music. You know, I never claim to be the only vessel that can be heard speaking the word of God. But God is spirit and moving through all this music and millions of people all across the world. So let us take time to just absorb God's word and his love. Go ahead and fire that song up, buddy. <laughs> Thank you.